In today's video, I'm gonna cover how to bleed the supercharger coolant system on your LT4 powered vehicle. Whether it's a Camaro, Corvette, Escalade V, Blackwing, the process is pretty much the same. You'll need a couple of things that will help you get this done a little easier. And I'll show you what all those things are in today's video. Here are some of the things that we're gonna need in order to do this, you know, whether you're uh, field bleeding, out on the track, whatever it might be, bring these with you if you track a lot. Uh, getting the air out of the supercharger cooling system is uh, tremendously helpful to consistently making power. Um, so here are some of the things you'll need. The easiest base way to do this is uh, get a fuse jumper. Get a, a little jump wire with a fuse on it. Uh, 15 amp fuse is what you'll want. Coolant pump for the supercharger runs on a 15 amp fuse. So get a 15 amp fuse in this. Now, if you don't have one of these or if you'd like to be a little bit more advanced than that, I went ahead and got a relay. This relay is uh, identical in style to the OEM relay that runs the coolant pump. However, uh, this one's black, but I've taken it apart and I've soldered the connection together between 87 and 30. Basically the same thing this thing does here. However, I've done it with a plug and play relay. The other thing you'll need is uh, this dedicated Motorsports LT4 supercharger bleeding adapter. Uh, what's nice about this is that it drops into the valve or the port on the LT4 that the coolant will bleed its air out of, and it actually just threads to your typical one liter, two liter bottle uh, to make this easier. So this will go onto the LT4 itself. There's a little rubber O-ring that goes over the valve side or the port side on the LT4. We'll fill this with coolant and uh, we'll watch some of it get sucked in. This is where we're gonna see the bubbles coming out of. Speaking of coolant, uh, Make sure you get a Dexco approved 50-50 mix, or if you're just using uh, water, you can use distilled water, make sure it's distilled water so that you're not introducing any contaminants into the cooling system. That is everything we need. And then of course, you want some good old fashioned shop towels to make sure that you're soaking up any of the coolant that may spill off to the sides when you're removing or putting on the adapter. Uh, also, it'll help clean things up around. So we'll get started. Before we get into the bleeding of the supercharger system, which will happen over here, uh, I actually want to cover something to do with the overall cooling system, which happens over here. Let's make sure that the coolant system is where it needs to be. So there's, there's actually two tanks here. There's the main tank and then there's the surge overflow tank which is further down there is a cold fill level on both of these tanks uh, you can see here on this side the cold fill is listed at the top and on the overflow tank or the surge tank so the cold fill on the overflow tank is down there as well you do need a smaller funnel, as I mentioned earlier, to fill that here. What I'm gonna do before I get started with anything on the supercharger system is get that overflow tank filled to the coal fill line. Under the hood, what you'll want to do is locate your fuse box. Now on the Camaro, it's on the passenger side near the front of the vehicle. Uh, if you need another point of reference, it's right by the uh, coolant tank over here. Uh, you're gonna open the box and get access to your fuse block. There is a relay right here, which is K6 and the K6 relay is for the coolant pump. Now, what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna wiggle this out and set that aside. 
And the two different methods that you can do this are jumper wire. You'll want to take uh, one side of the jumper wire to pin 30 and one side of the jumper wire to uh, 87. Or in this case, I'll make it easier for you. It's the top left and bottom right spaces. And once you do that, you'll hear the coolant pump start to run. The other method is getting your own relay, completely disassembling it, soldering 87 and 30 together, and then placing this into that relay spot, which will get the coolant pump running again. Now, the caveat to doing this is that the coolant pump shouldn't run for more than about five minutes at a time. Uh, if it does, you could potentially set a check engine light. Um, uh, the system thinks that the coolant pump is faulty because it hasn't stopped running uh, with the car off, especially. Also, you don't want to drain your battery. Uh, there are other ways to do this with the car running, uh, squeezing the hoses and things like that as uh, the, the engine is running. But I prefer to do this with the car off and with the coolant pump running. So now that we've got this plugged in and we've got the coolant pump running, uh, we'll go ahead and get to the next step, which is getting the adapter on, bleeding the air out. Now that we know where the relay goes on the fuse box here, uh, I'm gonna pull it back out. I don't wanna start this with the coolant pump running. Uh, what I do want to do is find the bleeder valve, which is right here. And I'm going to remove the rubber cap off of the bleeder valve, get that kind of tucked out of the way. Uh, and then I'm going to shove some shop towels, rags, whatever you might have available to you around the neck of that bleeder valve, uh, just to kind of mitigate some of the coolant that may leak out around this. So. Just kind of getting it tucked in there just to prevent spilling a bunch of coolant all over the uh, engine or in the engine bay, things like that. So we'll get that tucked in, move that out of the way. And then the next step is to actually take the O-ring that comes with the dedicated motorsports uh, adapter. Uh, we'll, you know, I've already screwed the two liter half bottle on here, but we're gonna take this O-ring and this actually goes on the bleeding valve itself. So we'll roll that on there. There's a nice little groove that it fits into right there, which I'll try to uh, get you a better view of so right here. And then once we've done that, I'm gonna push the adapter onto the bleeder valve here, and then I'm gonna fill it with coolant. And then once I've got it filled with coolant, I'm gonna plug the relay or the jumper wire back in to the fuse block and you'll see some of the, the air, will, uh, some of the fluid will get pulled in because the air is being moved through. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Again, I'm not filling it all the way up because I do want some of this coolant to get sucked in there, but we'll go ahead and run that pump now. And as it starts, you can see some of the coolant gets pulled in. Let that run for a little bit. And we're gonna watch for air bubbles coming out. Now we're gonna let this run for about five minutes or so, and then we're gonna turn it off. I'm not gonna remove it or take anything out of there. Just gonna let it sit. Uh, gonna give a couple minutes to let the uh, pump stop running and then I'm going to plug the relay back in to get it started again. So I'll give you a close up here of what that looks like as the air bubbles are coming out. It may be hard for the camera to pick up, but you can see a steady stream of tiny little microscopic bubbles flowing up here. And we want to keep doing this until that essentially goes away. Now, it's not, it's almost impossible to get this completely away. Oh, you just saw a big bubble there come up. But ultimately we wanna make sure that we get rid of all of these larger bubbles 
and uh, are only left with these little tiny microscopic bubbles or no bubbles at all. When I remove the relay or the jumper wire, you should see that burp a little as well. Another thing you can do to help get some of that air out is to squeeze the rubber hoses here and here that uh, lead into the supercharger coolant system. By doing this, you can help some of that trapped air get out. And you'll notice that you'll get a little bit more movement in here. Uh, you, you'll hear the pump gurgle a little bit sometimes as well. You can even wiggle this around a little here, uh, not too much, but that'll help get some of the larger chunks of air uh, that might be trapped out. The more and more that you let the air bubbles run through and the pump continue to run, the less and less significant air bubbles that you'll get. Also, you'll notice that there's less gurgling coming from the coolant pump itself. Uh, you'll really, you can't really hear this with the engine running, and that's why I prefer to do it this way with the engine off and running the coolant pump off of a jumper cable or a relay. This allows me to hear the coolant pump running, and it should be a consistent, steady hum with less and less gurgling happening. Now, eventually what you'll have is a better flowing system with little to no air bubbles left. And at this point, we'll pull the relay out or the jumper wire, whichever you're using. And then we'll use some shop towels or rags to soak up the coolant that is in the two liter bottle. Uh, make sure you dispose of coolant, oils, fluids properly, uh, especially within your local jurisdictions. Check on that. You know, don't just dump this stuff down the drain. Make sure that you're disposing of everything uh, properly. So now that I've got a majority of that absorbed there, I'm going to use the stuff that I tucked in around the neck to uh, lift the unit up. Lift straight up, give it a little twist and make a mess. Now that you've filled the adapter and the bottle off of the valve, you wanna make sure that you use a, another rag or a shop towel to clean up any residual coolant that was in there. Now, don't push down because then the Schrader valve that's in there will continue to push coolant out, but just gently push, uh, put that in there to absorb the fluid. Make sure you don't forget to pull the rubber O-ring that came with the dedicated motorsport adapter off because the rubber cap will not go back on without that. So make sure you pull that off. Uh, again, just wipe it down. If you spilled any coolant, it's really no big deal. Just try to get what you can cleaned off and then put the cap back on. Just don't forget to put your OEM relay back in, uh, whether you used a wire jumper or uh, your modified relay. You want to make sure you put the relay back in to the fuse block. Push that all the way in. Make sure you cover up your fuse block to protect it from the elements. And you are all set. There you have it. I wanted to do this video really because there were a lot of great videos out there on YouTube but they didn't do a start to finish step-by-step -step process. And when I was coming across doing this type of work, I had a lot of questions. 
majority of them were, how do I get started? And what do I do at the end? Um, a lot of those videos were great for showing you exactly how the air was coming out. Um, but I wanted to do something for the community, uh, specifically Camaro community, but obviously the LT4 is available in the Corvette, the Camaro, the Escalade V, the Blackwing. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that we had something that uh, we could watch from start to end and it would answer any of the questions that I personally had. I know a lot of research goes into my videos. So if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button, uh, give the video a like. It absolutely helps the YouTube algorithm. Um, and of course, as always, I'll have the links in the description of the video to all of the items that I'm using today the dedicated motorsports adapter. Uh, you can probably find a two liter bottle somewhere that you can cut up on your own, but I'll have links to the, the jumper wire, the relays uh, and all that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I enjoyed making it. I enjoyed doing the process. I love wrenching on cars. So hopefully watching this helps you out as well. Until then, I'll see you on the next video.